So let's start. Yeah, welcome everyone to this product demo about the White Wharf, a laser specially designed for three photon microscopy. So I'm Luisa and I'm the sales manager at Class 5 Photonics. And today I want to especially talk also about our dual output version, which we have now available, which offers uh, 1,300 nanometer for green fluorescence proteins and 1,700 nanometer for red fluorescence proteins. And uh, I will give you like here a small outline about the presentation today. So I will first discuss some application examples uh, done with the White Wharf of uh, some of our customers. Then I will explain a little bit the main features of the system, then show you some performance examples and also give you some of our uh, customer feedback and references. And then we will come to the Q&A session. So I think actually in total, we will be finished around half an hour to 40 minutes. So we are all here today because we have a common interest and that is actually to understand how the brain works. For example, how is a memory forming? How do emotions and learning work? And maybe also in future to understand brain diseases or even like, like Alzheimer, but even in the uh, future could like, for example, cure like such brain diseases because we better understand them. And uh, standard technique nowadays to image the brain and hence um, understand it and investigate it is multi-photon microscopy. And actually, I think most of the audience also are familiar with multi-photon microscopy. So I will just uh, briefly address here uh, the advantages. And today, especially, we uh, speak about three-photon microscopy, which is the improvement over two-photon microscopy, right? So. For three photon microscopy, you work it in with infrared lasers, for example, 1,300 nanometer for green fluorescence proteins and 1,700 nanometer for red fluorescence proteins. And you need quite a high peak intensity. This means a high pulse energy and short pulses because otherwise you cannot reach the, the intensity you actually needed for the three photon absorption process. And the advantage is that in three photon microscopy, you can reach this intensity threshold for the three photon absorption really only at the focus. So where you're focusing with your laser pulse. This means, especially if you want to image uh, deep inside the brain, you really enhance or you basically reduce the out of, uh, out of focus fluorescence, which comes from upper layers. So in comparison in two photon microscopy or even a linear fluorescence mi microscopy, you would have like a really um, blurry background and a high uh, signal to background ratio because you have a lot of fluorescence which is not really coming from the focus. And that's really the advantage and also why people use uh, three photon microscopy if you want to image really deep, uh, deep inside of the brain. And, uh, but this is like usually done like up to a millimeter, for example, but of course now neuroscientists yeah. have even goals which go further. So they want to image, for example, deeper tissue to go really beyond a millimeter. They want to image larger volumes and they also want to image these volumes at a higher frame rate so that they could basically like really image the, the brain like in real time. And they want to image, of course, at a better resolution. And I want to show you now the three examples which basically uh, address these goals. So first of all, uh, I will speak about uh, high-speed volumetric brain imaging. So this is done by our collaborator, Ali Pasha Vaziri at the Rockefeller University. And he built a microscope, which is a, called a hybrid multiplex sculpted light microscope. And what this microscope can do is quite amazing. So let me show you the video. So this microscope can actually image quite deep up to 1.1 millimeter within the cortex but also a really large volume. So what you see here is about one cubic millimeter uh, la uh, large volume. And this is actually imaged at a 17 Hertz frame rate. So this means that 17 times per second, they can really image here this entire cortical column. And uh, you see like the individual neurons, they are basically observing. And um, you could pro probably like from this deduce some, some dynamics or some, some inter, uh, relation how these neurons are working together. And uh, how this is achieved is um, actually a combined approach of two photon and three photon microscopy. 
and uh, they use uh, multiplexing. So they do not have just one beam which is scanning, but they have actually here in the upper volume, they have four beamlets. So they basically uh, multiplex their beam. They multiplex their beam and then four individual beamlets are scanning here the, 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 the brain volume and one here also below for three photon microscopy. And this means if this multiplexing parallelization, they can really reach this very high uh, volumes. And to do such experiments, you of course have certain requirements for the laser. So you need really high pulse energies to actually do the multiplexing. You need a quite high power to also have, of course, the high repetition rate. And of course, you want to have like a really reliable system. So if I go now to the second example, um, this is about imaging like in large depths of, as well, but also as a, at a really high resolution. So this is a very recent result, which was done during a demo at uh, Heidelberg, uh, in, um, at the EMBL at Heidelberg. So it's from the Prevail lab. And uh, so if you, three photon microscopy is still of course like limited also by optical aberrations. So if you want to go really deep in the tissue, you still have inhomogeneities, you have motion artifacts, and hence this just decreases the resolution which you can achieve if you go, for example, below one millimeter. So you saw, for example, before this very large volumes were only left like at a cellular resolution. So they were only able to resolve single neurons, but they could not go smaller to really see the fine structures within the brain. And how we can basically resolve this problem is with uh, aberration correction based on adaptive optics. So this is also the key technology which is already used in microscopy and which is actually also, for example, uh, used uh, in laser guide stars in astronomy. So they have a deformable mirror and with the deformable mirror, they can um, basically adapt the wavefront and hence uh, restore the performance of the microscope. And usually this can be done by adapting um, the wavefront for the whole system so that through the microscope itself, you have a very, very front correction, but you could also do this for the tissue. So here you see the difference. This is only like uh, adapted for, for the microscope itself, but here it's really also like adapted for the tissue. And this has to be done iteratively because I can of course not just measure the, 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 um, the aberrations, but I need to really do this in an iterative process. Let me close my email program. So I need to do this in an iterative process. And uh, I basically optimize to get a high fluorescence and a high resolution here uh, really deep inside the brain. And uh, what they achieved with this adaptive optics is actually like they went down to 1.545 millimeter inside the brain. So you can see here this YZ cut like in this plane basically. And you see really very, very fine structures. So these are single dendrites, which they were able to resolve. So the scale bar here are 20 micrometer. And uh, here they show a cut through, of, through a dendrite. So the scale bar here is two micrometer. And this means this was really almost near the fraction limited, the resolution they had, which I think is really quite impressive. And uh, for their setup, they also need, of course, really high pulse energies because they have a complex home-built microscope. And of course, they also want to, want to have a very reliable system. And the third example is now something uh, very different. So that's a head-mounted microscope. You, so you see here the mouse, which can run actually freely around and which has a small microscope on its head. So, and uh, you see here a cut through of the microscope. It's really tiny. It has only five gram in weight. I'm not sure if you see my, uh, see my video, but I brought one of the samples which they 3D print and then they put the optics here inside. So the microscope is really just that small. And uh, like this, they can really have mice running around and even jumping around. And the difficulty here is completely different, is really different. So, so you have the laser far away. They have an optical fiber, which is uh, 1.2 meters long, which will of course get bent when the mouse is running around. And they need to make sure that they have, of course, the high energy and the ultra short pulses 
delivered to their microscope. And for this, they have a very special holocore photonic band crab crystal fiber, which is optimized at 1.3 uh, micrometer. And this uh, fiber in their case had a really high transmission of 93% and also almost negligible group velocity dispersion so that they can really make sure that the laser pulses are basically coming here to the microscope. And I think this is a very good example of uh, that the laser needs to be really reliable. I mean, you have a living animal, it's even running around, you have this fiber which is bending. So of course you want to make sure that at least your laser is running as stable as possible. So with these three examples, I hope I was uh, able to demonstrate you a bit like the requirements for a laser system in three photon microscopy for such uh, very exciting applications. And we are exactly addressing these requirements with the white dwarf. So we have the high pulse energy and the high power. So uh, we have around five microjoule pulse energy at one megahertz. And this means in power around five watt average power. And this is actually the highest average power for a dedicated laser for three photon microscopy, which is commercially available. And this is basically achieved by our OPCPA technology, which we developed here as researchers on the DC campus, and which we are also continuing to, to develop further. And uh, for this, we really take our expertise we have in very high power laser systems and uh, transmit this to these compact white dwarf systems uh, for microscopy. And the third point is uh, reliability. So we really have a very robust system and this we achieve by really um, uh, building on high quality components and also by offering like a one box solution. So you can see here uh, like a picture of our system with an open lid and we actually place the pump laser inside. So usually for these systems, people have like two components, the pump laser and the OPA. And this means they would have like a, a path on the optical table between these two boxes. And we try or we avoid this by putting the pump laser inside. And this means this really makes it even more robust. And as a pump source, we used the Coherent Monaco, which is a fiber laser with 60 watt, which we have very good experience. And this makes also the overall system, of course, more robust and reliable. So here you can see a picture in a customer lab with the closed lid. So this is how it will look like on the optical table. And uh, this performance we, of course, uh, offer now at 1,300 nanometer for green fluorescence proteins and also at 1,700 nanometer for red fluorescence proteins. And this we offer really in this one box solution. So you have uh, both outputs available here so that you can really, so that you really have a system which is very dedicated for three photon microscopy. And the uh, system was also already delivered to, to customers. So I'm really looking forward to now also get a new results at 1.7 micrometer with our system. So for you, in order to understand the benefits or also the, the features of the white dwarf a bit better, I have like here a schematic setup. So as I said, we have this uh, one box solution. There's the coherent Monaco inside, for example, at 60 microjoules, one megahertz. And then what is special about our approach is that we have really two independent OPCPA channels. So we have one OPCPA channel, which is optimized at 1.3 micrometer and we have one which is optimized at 1.7 micrometer. So um, this means both of them are really optimized at this specific wavelength for high performance uh, and also for, for robustness and stability. And uh, we achieve like in total five watts. So for example, in this uh, here, I just distributed the power equally. So I can have uh, 2.5 microjoule at one megahertz at the one output and 2.5 microjoule at one megahertz at the other output. And this runs then in parallel. And additionally, what I also want to mention is that we have the compressor already included in our system. This means you don't need an external compressor to compress your pulses or to adapt uh, to your microscope objective, but we can do this in our system. So we basically work together with most of the microscope manufacturers that we can compensate their setup already in our system. So this is like a pre-compensation basically. And this has not, to, this doesn't need to be done externally, but we can do this internally in our system. 
So this is just one example, but uh, the white dwarf can also be configured. So for example, the adaptive optics case I showed you before requires really high pulse energies. So here we had all the five watts in one channel, and then basically people can switch to the other wavelength if they want to work at red fluorescence proteins. Also here, I'm just showing one megahertz, but we also already have customers at uh, two megahertz or four megahertz such systems if they prefer to work at high rep rates. And now quite some people also have an interest in optical uh, optogenetics. So stimulation directly with the, with the Monaco at 1030 nanometers. So of course, we also can have like an extra output for the Monaco here for optical stimulation. Now that we uh, talked a little bit about the system and its features, I want to show you just very briefly some performance examples. So these are typical spectra at 1.3 and 1.7 micrometer. So you see here the spectrum at uh, 1.3 micrometer, and I also plotted it the three photon absorption cross section, which you see they both have the peak here at uh, 1300 nanometers, and also our spectrum is not broader than actually the, the, the absorption, because you want to make sure that you really have the high intensity of course here where your cross-section is, uh, is the largest. And here's a typical spectrum at 1.7 micrometer. Then of course also important is the temporal profile. So we routinely have below 50 femtoseconds for width half maximum at 1.3 micrometer and uh, 65 to 70 femtoseconds at 1.7 micrometer. And these are also like uh, almost for ye limited uh, pulses. And uh, last but not least, the uh, pulse stability. So here is an example measurement where we let uh, the system run over more than uh, two days. And it has an RMS value of uh, less than 0.5%. And what we typically like uh, state for our systems and which we always achieve conservatively is better than 1% stability over 12 hours. So of course it's uh, difficult to just like put numbers there and demonstrate with this the reliability and the stability. That's why I also want to show you some of our customer feedback. So the example about the adaptive optics, they had the system only about uh, six weeks and they were really impressed about the stability and the performance of our white dwarf. And I think this was also a reason why they have been able in such a short time to make such nice results, which they were then able to include into a nature paper. We also did a test with a local microscope manufacturer and they actually used or did for the first time three photon microscopy. So they got our system and they were really also very impressed that from the beginning, they were already able to, to do measurements with the system and to combine it with their microscope. And also we got a very nice feedback about our service and support. So I want to really mention here that uh, customer happiness is very important for us. Like most of the people from our company also worked in science and research before. So we really know how important it is that we have uh, running equipment which uh, which works very well and this is why like excellence also in service is really important for us so we aim typically to respond within 24 hours and we also have um, worldwide maintenance plans available or extended warranty um, yeah, warranty extensions and this can be also arranged together with coherent and the monaco system So with this, I want to already uh, conclude my uh, presentation. So Class 5 is a growing innovative company. We already have several systems installed worldwide, uh, especially for the White Ward, for example, at Rockefeller, Columbia, HHMI, CESAR, MIT, Minnesota. And we're, of course, looking forward for more to come. So uh, please, if you have uh, any questions, you can also, of course, write me directly per email. And uh, here I want to really emphasize that we have, again, next year, a demo system available. So if anyone is interested to get the White War for four to six weeks to um, test it, use it, and potentially get new results with the system in 3 photo microscopy, um, please write me a message and uh, we can already plan this. And uh, yeah, so... With this, I hope I gave you a good overview of the White Dwarf and its capabilities. 
And I'm very happy now to answer your questions. So please uh, write in the chat box or you can also raise your hand and ask the question directly. 